Hello lovelies. In just a few weeks, we will be welcoming the newest member of our family home. And in preparation for this little one's arrival, I am doing a lot of meal prepping. So I'm prepping some of my favorite recipes to freeze them so that when the baby's born, in the midst of all of that breastfeeding and diaper changing and baby snuggling, I don't have to do any extra cooking. Now, today it is all about this absolutely delicious Italian wedding soup. Now, if you're not familiar with Italian wedding soup, it's so tasty because it features meatballs. And what is not to love about a soup that is loaded with yummy meatballs? This recipe makes a nice huge batch, so I'm going to enjoy some with the fam tonight, but also freeze some for later. Now to get started, I have got some ground beef and some ground chicken in my bowl. Traditionally in Italian wedding soup, you would use a combination of beef and pork. I'm opting for chicken here to keep things a little lighter, but you can swap in pork, no problem. I've also made this very same recipe using double chicken and that works really well too. To make our meatballs, I'm gonna start by adding some breadcrumbs to this as well as one egg. Both of those ingredients are gonna help bind our meatballs together. And then I wanna add some flavor. So to start, I've got some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. You guys know how I feel about freshly grated Parmesan. In my opinion, it is the only way to go. I also have some freshly chopped parsley, so about a quarter of a cup. I've got some Italian seasoning here. And then finally, for some really nice garlicky flavor, I'm going to be grating in a clove or two of garlic. I like grating the garlic so that you don't end up with big chunks of garlic in any of your meatballs, but however you wanna do it is totally up to you. I'll season this up liberally with some salt and some pepper, and then I just wanna get this really well combined. You can either do it with a fork or with your hands, like I often end up doing, because my hands just seem to be the right tool for the job to get everything really well mixed. You don't wanna overwork your meat because you don't wanna make your meatballs too tough. You want them to be nice and tender. So just get that combined. Then we can go ahead and form our meatballs. I've got a parchment lined baking sheet here that I'm going to be placing my meatballs on as I form them. We are going to be making a lot of meatballs. So if you have some extra hands that could help out in the kitchen, that will make this job go a little bit faster. I like to use a cookie scoop for this job just because it keeps the meatballs pretty uniform. And then I just roll my meatballs between my hands until they form the perfect little shape. And then I'll arrange all of my completed meatballs on a parchment lined baking sheet. I'll be honest, when I turned the camera off, I sat down to do this because let's be serious, at eight months pregnant, too much standing is not good for anyone. Um, but my meatballs are all formed and now we are ready to get cooking. So there are actually a number of different ways to cook your meatballs in an Italian wedding soup. Some people like to pop them into the oven right on the baking tray and they'll cook them completely before adding them to the soup. Other people will just leave the meatballs raw and add them straight into the hot broth and let them cook in the soup itself. The third way is the way I really like to do it. It's to sear them in a little bit of oil in the same pot you're going to be cooking your soup. And while this process is a little more time consuming, in my opinion, it develops the best color and the best flavor. So that's why I think it is totally worth the effort. But honestly guys, whatever you wanna do is up to you. Now to get started, I have got my nice big Dutch oven heating up on the stove, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get my meatballs into my pan in a single layer. So we're going to be doing this in batches. You don't wanna rush these because you wanna make sure that they get golden on all sides and you have to do that in a single layer. It's important to be gentle with your meatballs here because you do not wanna squish them. Once you've got your first batch of meatballs in the pot, you wanna let it cook up for maybe one to two minutes, just until it starts to get a slightly brown color. Then you can use your tongs to give them a little nudge, sort of roll them around a little bit to get them browned on the opposite side, and then another nudge to get them brown on another side. And what you end up with are these nice golden meatballs. And we'll just remove those meatballs from the pan and get started on our next batch. Keep in mind, these are not fully cooked through yet. They're going to finish cooking in the hot broth of the soup. So not to worry, we just wanted to get that nice color happening and then we'll get them back in here to finish up cooking. Once you've got all of those meatballs browned, you can set them aside and we'll get to work on making our delicious soup. 
Now to get started, once again, I'm gonna heat up a little bit of oil in my pot. And as soon as that oil is nice and hot, I'm going to add some onion, some celery, and some carrots to the pot. A really classic soup combination. I'll let those cook up, stirring them frequently for between three and five minutes, just until the veggies start to soften up and you see that celery turn nice and bright green. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some garlic into the pot. I, of course, love garlic pretty much in everything. And an Italian soup definitely needs to have some garlic in it. And just as soon as that garlic is fragrant, after about 30 seconds, I'll go ahead and add my broth to the pot. So I am using eight cups of good quality chicken broth and I'm going to get that right into my pot. And we're just gonna let that broth come to a nice rolling boil. And in the meantime, I wanna impart even more great flavor into this soup. And I'm going to do that using a Parmesan rind. Now, this is basically what's left over once you're done grating all of the Parmesan cheese. You just have this rind. I like to save mine in a zipper bag in the refrigerator. And whenever I'm making a nice savory soup like this, I pop one of the rinds into the broth. And as that broth cooks up, the rind will impart this absolutely amazing savory flavor into my stock that is super, 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 super delicious. It is soup after all. If you don't have a Parmesan rind like this on hand though, not to worry. You could also just add some freshly grated Parmesan at the end of cooking as well to get that same amazing flavor. I just like the Parmesan rind because of course it creates no waste and we are all about less waste in the kitchen. Just as soon as you have that nice rolling boil happening, you know it's time to add your pasta. Now, traditionally in Italian wedding soup, they use something called acini di pepe. I'm using something just slightly bigger. You wanna use just a really, really small pasta. Sometimes I'll use stars for Elle because she loves them, but I didn't have any on hand. And I'm just gonna get in here with my pasta. And then I also wanna go ahead and add my meatballs to this. Now, I'm probably gonna add half of my meatballs and save the other half for another batch. Or maybe I'll just add them all. <laughs> so we're going to let this bubble and boil away for another 10 to 15 minutes. We wanna make sure our meatballs are cooked fully through and that our pasta is nice and cooked and then we will add our finishing ingredients. And then friends, we can get eating, cause let's be honest, we're starving. <laughs> After 10 minutes, your meatballs are going to be fully cooked through and that pasta is going to be nice and tender. And then we can add our finishing touches. Now, this next step is optional, but I absolutely love it because I think it adds a ton of richness to this dish. We're basically going to be adding some egg into our soup. Now, if you've never added egg to soup before, I know it sounds a little strange, but I will tell you, it adds a ton of this beautiful richness to your soup broth that I think you're really going to enjoy. So consider it. I am basically just gonna start by whisking up a couple of eggs. And then we're going to do something called tempering. So to do that, I'm just going to use a measuring cup and I'm gonna go in here and get myself a nice bit of soup. And what you wanna make sure you're doing while you're tempering is you're gonna add your broth really slowly to your egg and you wanna keep it whisking because otherwise you will end up scrambling and that is not what we are going for. This is going to help the temperature of the eggs rise without scrambling them so that when we add them back into the pot of soup, we don't end up with a big curdled mess. Once you've got your eggs nicely tempered, you can add them into your pot and you'll see almost instantly the texture of your broth changes to become really rich and a little bit thick and super, super tasty. The final step here is just to add some glorious greens to this. Now, escarole is very common in an Italian wedding soup, but I had spinach on hand, so that's what I'm using today. I just gave some baby spinach a nice quick chop and I'm going to get it into the pot. And just as soon as that spinach is nicely wilted, this yummy soup is ready to be enjoyed. Oh my gosh, guys, there is so much to love about it. It smells amazing, it looks amazing, it tastes amazing. You can eat it fresh and hot from the stove or you can freeze it like I'm going to do. Totally up to you. Both ways are absolutely delicious. I really hope you guys will give this recipe a try for yourselves. And if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo because you know how much I love seeing your kitchen creations. 
This recipe, like all of my recipes, is featured on HealthyMealPlans.com, our amazing meal planning site that allows you to browse more than a thousand recipes, drag and drop them into your weekly meal plan, and then automatically generates your grocery list for the week. What could be easier? I hope you'll check it out. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.